In 1990, we saw the first chink in the armor of Hulkamania when Hulk Hogan lost to the Ultimate Warrior clean at WrestleMania 6 in the Toronto Skydome. A few months later, Earthquake gave him the avalanche drop, for lack of a better term, several times and put him out of action for the entire summer while he went to go film the movie Suburban Commando. As a fan then, my belief was it was over. And I distinctly remember the night of WrestleMania 6, April 1st, 1990, sitting on the top of my stairs outside of my bedroom sobbing because I thought Hulkamania was over. And for years I kept that hidden. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want anybody to think any different of me. Until I interviewed Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. He cried that night also. There might have been different reasons. Mine was because it was a childhood hero that I thought was winding down his career. His was that the most popular wrestler in the history of wrestling, still is the case, was possibly calling it a day, and the new era was not one that Ted believed in. Regardless, that set the trajectory of thinking that a career could be, could be over. There was a chink in the armor. Something had happened to give me the belief that we could be reaching a climax here. Fast forward to 2012, SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar against Triple H. I don't remember anybody implying that this was a retirement match. I also don't remember anybody implying that should Triple H come up short, that all of a sudden his career very could be over. What was said was that maybe he couldn't compete with this younger guy who's no longer that young. When Raw was announced that it was going to be three hours, I cringed. And I didn't cringe because I don't like the WWE. If I didn't like the WWE, I wouldn't be filming a video like this. I cringed because I knew what was going to happen. And what was going to happen was it would be the same show, the same two-hour format show, set to three hours with the same amount of content just stretched out. Triple H is one of the best performers we've seen in decades. He is one of the last of a great generation. That was what WrestleMania was built on, and it was legitimate. But if he has a negative, if there is a kryptonite to the Cerebral Assassin's arsenal, it is that he likes himself on television too much. He likes long segments. And it's not just his segments. When he started writing some of the shows, you could see that the segments were extended for long, dramatic, boring pauses that nobody picks up the drama for. I'll call your attention to WWF or WWE Homecoming in 2005 when they returned to the USA Network. That's the night that Evolution spit up. Triple H hit Ric Flair in the head with a sledgehammer. Then he kept hitting him with a sledgehammer for two and a half segments. I don't know about you, but I think the story was told the second he actually hit him with the sledgehammer. The rest was gravy. And not gravy as in it made it taste better. I'm talking about that overbearing amount of gravy like you get at church's chicken. Maybe that's grease. So here we are. Raw, the other night, Triple H is in the ring talking about his career-ending defeat that nobody knew was a career-ending defeat. And I read online that this is to try to tell the story because nobody was getting it. Well, nobody was getting it because there is no chink in the armor. We all know that Triple H is not a full-time wrestler anymore. At best, he's a part-time wrestler, if not a special attraction at this point. Nobody cared because he's a special attraction. He lost a match that didn't matter. It was two guys that are essentially part-time wrestlers at best having a match. Nobody really cared who was going to win or lose because, quite frankly, what does it matter? So that long promo, much like this long promo, served no purpose. It just was filler. The only way 
that wrestling will ever return to prominence is if two things happen. One, a return to a sports feel. Sometimes there's guys that suck. Sometimes those guys get beat quickly. That's Boxing 101. That's UFC 101. Return to squash matches. That would be a big help. It would set levels on guys that's not there now because everybody is mid-card to main event. There's no middle card. There's no low card. It would help. The other thing is a story. The simple basis of a story is you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I know some people out there think that that's the basis of every wrestling story. No, that's the basis of every story, period. If it's a good story, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And you don't have to have a thousand twists in between. You can. Do what you want with it. Have fun. But the beginning, the middle, and the end have to be solid. A cor a twist is not a plot. And a long, boring talking segment on a wrestling show, and it is a wrestling show, folks, that's why they put the ring up, is not entertaining. Hogan put chinks in the armor. Triple H didn't. Hogan was a superhero character that every little boy looked up to, including me. Triple H might have some little boys looking up to him, but he's not a superhero character. In fact, he's been a villain more than he's been a superhero or a babyface. I don't like long talking segments like that. I think they're a sign of the bad times that we're in, and I sure as hell hope we don't see another one this week.